Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video is on the do's and don'ts of teaching online presented by me, Bree, with Let's Talk Tech. So the objectives for today's video are for you to better understand online teaching, um, understanding best practices for teaching online, the benefits and challenges of teaching online, and getting right into the meat of it, those do's and don'ts for teaching online. So let's start off with what is online teaching? Online teaching is any teaching that is conducted remotely um, in an online setting over the internet. Some other terms you will hear in exchangeable are distance learning, e-learning, or remote learning. Um, some best practices for online teaching is definitely set expectations. You want to be clear as if you're talking to beginners. Um, you want to establish a supportive online community uh, not only for yourself, but for your learners as well. You want to always ask for feedback because it helps you um, perfect or enhance constantly updating your online teaching style, methods, whatever you use for your online teaching. You want to incorporate group and individual projects. Um, it just gives the learners purpose. Um, in some of my other videos, I talk about the benefits of project-based learning and things like that. Um, you definitely want to foster a personal relationship with your learners. It's always hard um, for online students, and it might be especially hard for you. It's different, so you want to foster those personal relationships as you would in your face-to-face -face classroom. Um, you want to foster and facilitate self-learning. Um, you want to encourage your learners to be self-motivated and self-directing. You want to give them the tools to start and you want them to be able to finish. Um, you want to craft thoughtful and meaningful process, uh, responses Sorry, when you're responding through your feedback methods. Don't just, you know, give a half response and you really didn't read the discussion or did you really didn't read what they sent you you want to always think about what you're giving back to your learners you definitely want to have that closing activity i.e that project-based learning it kind of brings everything together at the end of the course um, that the learner is learning throughout the course um, you want to keep your online learning fresh you want to mix it up. You want to have different types of online tools that you incorporate in your online course, lectures, um, case-based project learning, the project learning, the small group discussions, small group projects, hands-on activities to keep the learner engaged in their learning process. And you want to use accessible resources. And that could be anything from free online tips and tricks, free online books, free online websites where students can go. Um, I mean, there's so many resources that can use that are readily available to the learners. And some benefits of online learning is increased flexibility, um, definitely because you kind of have a set theme of what your learners are going to be doing um, and you have some automated processes which frees up your teaching time to focus on learning and issues that your learners are actually having. Um, it gives students 24-hour access to course materials. Um, they can learn at any time, learn at any place, learn in the car, learn while they're waiting for mom or dad to pick them up. They can review these activities um, where they're not confined just to learning in the classroom. Um, it allows different opportunities for assessment um, where you can have automatic feedback or automatic grading, uh, which gives you more time to focus on teaching issues. It's very convenient because um, it allows you to teach anywhere essentially and your learners to learn anywhere essentially. Um, again, it gives you more time to focus on that instruction with pre-planned materials already in place. It definitely, if you can get all these components, get them together, have them lined correctly, it promotes higher engagement and learning from your students because 
they know they have to do it. They're invested in their own learning. It is very efficient when you can have um, the pre-planned materials, the pre-planned assessments. Um, it's, it's easier for the students to follow along, know what they're doing. And it frees up some of those administrative tasks such as grading and doing other types of administrative things that instructors or teachers do. Um, some challenges for online teaching is knowledge and comfort with using technology. Not every teacher is accustomed or equipped with technology tools and hence that's why we go into that a little bit later um, in some of my videos and in the course that I offer Let's Talk Tech for Educators to make you aware and comfortable and knowledgeable about computer and technology components. Um, setting course goals and activities and assessments. If you're not familiar with online learning or in, in um, educational technology tools, um, it can be frustrating or difficult for instructors to incorporate those type of things in their courses to make their online learning interactive. Um, it's hard to build a community of learners because everybody is where they're at in different places, wherever they may be. So you have to just learn how to build that community of learners in your online course. Um, facil facilitating meaningful discussions. It can be a struggle um, because, you know, everybody doesn't want to participate. You have to, you know, sometimes give extra incentives for individuals to engage with the question or discussion that you're offering is in addition to the other learners in the classroom. Managing all the screens, you know, we have multiple screens that we look at. Sometimes, again, it's frustrating using the technology encouraging collaboration um, it is hard to get online learners to work with each other because they're not always there in that setting but there are tools that you can use to encourage collaboration the group projects in your online courses we all have those passive students where they're just not engaged if you not on them they just kind of lollygag and sometimes you have to you know, stay on those students, give them the, give them an extra push. And that's where you um, kind of get the feel from when you're creating those personal relationships with your learners. You can kind of see and learn who your passive students are, who your self-motivated students are. And that's why the online classroom benefits you because it automates some of those processes where you can focus more on t um, the teaching and building those relationships with your students who may not always stay on track. Um, again, staying connected with students and it's difficult for online teaching because it is time consuming. You have to invest in your online learning. You have to invest in your online teaching. Um, you have to invest time in creating projects for project-based uh, learning and project activities. You have to research, you know, free online resources to incorporate in your class. So it, it's definitely time consuming and it's already hard enough being a teacher or educator. So those can be challenges, but it's going to be worth it at the end of the day once you get everything aligned. So some of the do's with online teaching you definitely want to be prepared um it's it's hard for online teaching it's hard for online learning so you want to make sure that when you're coming to your online classroom if it's a live classroom you want to make sure you're prepared you want to have good lighting you want to do a practice run to check your background to make sure there's nothing distracting in your background um, do a practice run with your technology um, to make sure everything's working correctly or if something doesn't work correctly, you know how to address it and fix it or you can give your learners instructions on how to easily fix those activities or issues that's going on um, versus scrambling about it in the middle of your learning time. You want to send activities to print in advance so they'll already have those when it's time to do activity time um, instead of trying to get them to print those off in the middle of your learning session. Please, please, please 
if you are in a, a, um, a live learning session, you want to mute everyone as you're meeting and starting. Um, I know it's difficult and this is why it's kind of very important for you to learn your technology that you're using. Um, I know I've seen a lot of complaints where students um, and even parents can hear other parents hearing everyone in their background. You should be able to have control of your classroom online as you would have control in your physical classroom. Um, you want to advise students in advance, parents in advance that they're being recorded. Um, you know, so the students will have I guess a lesson to come back to kind of gives them that 24 ac 24 hour access to course materials. Make sure they're aware of that, sign those waivers, things like that. You wanna foster collaboration. Find other teachers in your grade level um, to create, share your lesson plans with and activities with. Um, everything that you do starting off doesn't have to be yours. Um, there are plenty of resources and sites um, that give you the opportunity to collaborate with other teachers to get some of a feel of what they do in their classrooms that work um, until you get comfortable with online teaching to where you can start creating your own or you might want to tweak some of those lessons to make them your own. Um, again, reaching out to teachers across the world, across school districts, across schools for tips and tricks. You can't even start, you know, in your school district, um, a fifth grade, you know, teachers association where you guys just share amongst each other, you know, laugh, cry, complain. You know, we all need a support system. You definitely want to build a community again. It allows the students to have social time before the lessons. You can have everybody on mute, um, do, you know, groups where, you know, they can talk about what they did today, how was their weekend, what's going on, what's their frustrations. You can pop in and out of those group sessions to see, you know, how they're doing, what complaints or what kudos your students have. Um, and then try to do that daily. It kind of gives, you know, your students a catch-up time. You know, they can connect with their classmates, with their friends um, in a way that they, you know, they used to be able to do in the classroom. And have some grace. Have some understanding. You're going to make mistakes. Your students are going to make some mistakes. Just lighten up a little. Understand that it's new, it's frustrating for parents, students, and yourself as an educator. So you have to be understanding um, when it comes to those type of things. So don't, please don't overwhelm your students. Don't try to give them more work than you think they should do. You might not even wanna give them all of the work that they should normally get in a classroom until everyone's acclimated to the online environment. Um, allow chat boxes for your students to ask questions, going back to you want everyone on mute. Um, that way, if they're having questions, they're having issues, everyone's not trying to talk at one time, everyone's not talking over you. It's kind of a uniform way um, to, for students to release that frustration. Um, don't make assumptions. Don't assume that, you know, the students or your learners understand technology because they're in a generation of technology. Um, don't under, I guess, don't underestimate or make an assumption that your students don't have other activities to do at home, you know, as well. They could take care of siblings, they could have chores. So you want to set those expectations, set daily homework, set daily activities for them to do and don't overwhelm them. Don't just assume that they are kids and they don't have anything else to do in the world because nine times out of 10, they do. Um, and understand that all students don't have immediate access to, um, you know, complete their assignments to internet, to a computer, you know, they might not have that 24 hours out of the day and some of your students might. So you have to foster those relationships, get to know your students, see who has the capabilities, who needs to help, who needs the leeway. Um, and, and that's gonna better 
you know, help your course and help your students. Um, don't expect perfection from yourself, from your learners. You see in my videos, I stumble over my words. I'm human, you know, I'm gonna make mistakes. I get frustrated with my own technology. Um, even making this video, I had to uninstall some things, reinstall some things, log out of some things. And I just have to understand everything's not gonna go perfect for me, even with me being a technologist. Everything is not gonna be perfect for you with you with your online teaching, especially if some of you are first time um, teachers. And have patience. There's connectivity issues, you know, tech savvy issues, timeout issues for you and your students. I get logged out of things sometimes because I let them sit too long. Every student isn't tech savvy as we think they are. And I have to remember that as well, even with some of the comments that I make in general, you know, I just have to learn that everybody's technology level is different everybody's going to have different experiences um, when dealing with technology it's just it is what it is so you just definitely have to have patience um, so a brief recap there are many benefits to teaching online you know the pre-planned um, materials you definitely have automated processes that free up your time for focusing on teaching and focus on building those personal relationships with your students definitely remember those best practices for teaching online being prepared um, just being understanding knowing your technology knowing the computer components knowing how to incorporate educational technology tools to help automate some of those teaching processes um, understanding your challenges and how to address them you understand you want to understand what you don't understand but you want to know how to go about understanding them you want to have a plan for when things go wrong maybe a backup or you know just have some type of place or resource that you can go to to help with your challenges you have as an online teacher and understand what you should and shouldn't be doing as an online instructor. There is no perfect way to be an online instructor. There is no perfectness to teaching online. No one's perfect, no one's perfect. So you just have to understand, I guess, those best practices for what you should do and what you shouldn't do when teaching online. So thanks for tuning in, everyone.